Hello, everybody, and welcome to this podcast on November the 20th, the last Sunday before Advent, but also Prisoner Sunday. And I begin, as usual, with the notices. So the next service in Pencoid will be this Wednesday, the 16th of November at 10 o'clock in St. David's. And once again, we had another very successful joint service at St. John's Church in Aberkenfig. It's lovely to see a full church and to hear the singing. Well, our next joint service will be here at St. David's in Pencoid on Sunday, the 11th of December. So come along, meet some new people who worship in the same ministry area and hear what congregational singing sounds like in a full church. We're still doing Zoom coffee on Thursday mornings at 11 o'clock. We have a chat and a pray. We also sing along to some well-known hymns in the privacy of our own homes. So come and join us if you fancy a bit of company on a Thursday morning. Contact me for details of codes to join. So you could phone me on 07592149538 or you could email me at revglender at lphparish.org.uk. And you can also find these details on the website or in the parish magazine. On the 14th of December, I am being officially licensed as a non stipendiary House for Duty priest to Comorgur, which is still part of the same ministry area. The service will be in St. Devodrug's Church, 7 o'clock, the 14th of December. So please come along. It would be lovely to see as many people as possible there. The next Chat and Craft Club meeting will be at 2 o'clock on Tuesday, the 13th of December, as usual at St. David's Church Hall in Pencoid. We are a friendly chatty bunch and we love to welcome newcomers. Tuition is provided by the wonderful Judy and all materials are provided as well. So if you want to come along or you can bring your own craft or knitting, please feel free to do so. It's good sometimes to do these things in the company of others. Or if you're not really a crafter or a knitter, you could just come along for a coffee or a tea and a chat. Crafting is not compulsory. You could just treat it as a coffee afternoon. There's no need to book, just come along. Now, as I said before, we have had a very successful Open the Book visit to Pencoy Primary School. It was great fun with adults joining in as much as the children. If you haven't done it before but would like to join or would like to find out more about it, please let, let me know by ringing me on 07592. One four nine five three eight, or you could email me at revglender at lphparish.org.uk. You can find these details on the website or in the parish magazine. And I think that's all the notices for this week. And we will now have our reading. The gospel reading for this week is from St. Luke chapter 23 starting at verse 33. Glory to God, our Saviour. When to the, they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing and they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is God's Messiah, the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up to him and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him, which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? 
save yourself and us. But the other colonel rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence. We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. When he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Praise to Christ our Lord. Thank you for that, Mel. And now we come to my thoughts on that reading and on Prisoner Sunday. So as I said, today is Prisoner Sunday, and as many of you know, I am a part-time chaplain in the Park Prison. Before then, I was a voluntary prison visitor. So I have been going into the prison for nearly seven years. Park is a Category B pr male prison, which means it holds every type of prisoner, from petty criminals to rapists, murderers, murderers and sex offenders. The only offenders it doesn't hold are terrorists and serial or mass murderers. So how did I get into it to begin with? It began with a conversation with a curate in my sending parish, Reverend Jane Shaw. I was on a journey towards selection for ordination training and we discussed chaplaincy in prisons and hospitals. We investigated prison visiting and eventually I was put in touch with Owen Raymond, who organises the official visitors for the park. After a chat, Owen took me for a trial visit to see if I wanted to do it. The rest, as they say, is history. I must admit that when I began, I was full of doubt at my ability to do it. I had been a teacher of children with additional learning needs for 20 years, and I had seen the social and emotional difficulties that can affect children, both as the family of and as the victim of men who were now in prison. I wasn't sure that I could be non-judgmental and relate to the perpetrators of these crimes as human beings and not as monsters who deserve everything they get. But then when I started, I didn't find a prison full of monsters, but a prison full of vulnerable adults. Many couldn't read or write. Many were in there for drug or alcohol-related offences. Many had severe mental health issues. Many were on recall from licence for the pettiest of reasons. One was there because his doctor changed his antipsychotic medicine gone on holiday and left him unmonitored while his delusions and voices came back. So it was a bit of a shock. But I knew from that visit it was something that I could do and wanted to do. It took six months to get security clearance, but eventually I became an official prison visitor and later a chaplain. And the question I get asked all the time is why? Why do, do I go into prison and help those who have committed awful crimes? Well, there are two answers to this. Firstly, compassion. In John 15, verse 12, Jesus commands us to love each other as I have loved you. This is not a command to love those we like or our family or those who behave in a socially acceptable manner, but everyone, whoever they are, whatever they have done. We may not love what they've done, but we love the person. And in this morning's reading, Jesus gives us an example of that, that forgiveness when he forgives those who had wrongly, wrongfully persecuted him and the repentant criminal who was being crucified with him. I believe that in serving others and in helping them to understand that no one is beyond redemption, we are serving Jesus, no matter who they are or what they've done. And I believe my work in the prison is part of trying to live out the service to which Jesus has called me. Many of the people I talk to have no other visitors, no other link to the outside world, no one to have a normal conversation with. Many of them have a faith which needs bolstering and strengthening in order to give them as good a chance as possible when they get out. 
Some of them find faith in prison and want direction in how best to follow that faith while inside. And we should remember Jesus forgives. As long as we truly repent and do our best to keep on the right path, Jesus will forgive us anything. However, I don't ask what the prisoners have done. I believe it's better not to know. Sometimes they tell me anyway, and I don't have to approve of what they've done. I don't have to sympathise with them because they're in prison. If they've done wrong, they need to be punished and society needs to be protected. But I do have to be non-judgmental. God will do the judging at the end of time. So I cannot be a judge and I cannot go around thinking of them as bad people. And some of them have horrendous backgrounds. Dysfunctional families where these men have assisted their parents to inject drugs from a young age, 12 or 13, and so got caught in that culture themselves. Many can't read or write, so they can't get jobs. They fall into crime either to get what they can't afford or to fit in with the crowd they are with. This doesn't excuse what they have done, but it does go some way to explaining the bad choices they have made. I grew up on Sandfields Estate, which, as most of you will know, is a rough estate in Port Albert, and I went to Sandfields Comprehensive, at that time, the roughest school in West Glamorgan. And I listen to some of these men's stories and think, they're but for the grace of God. Many of the people I went to school with ended up in prison. And ultimately, despite what they've done, they are still God's children. And Jesus himself said, the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. You find that in Luke chapter 19. In modern society, the lost are sleeping rough or drug and alcohol dependent or in prison. In Jesus' time, the outcasts were the lepers. But today's lepers are those in prison, especially sex offenders. In the second part of the quote from Luke, and save the lost is the other reason why I go into prison. Everyone is entitled to salvation, to redemption, even those in prison. In the book of Isaiah, it says, to make a start of bringing people into the open, into light, opening blind eyes, releasing prisoners from dungeons, emptying the dark prisoners. Well, I might not be able to empty the prisons, and I'm not sure I would if I could, but I can bring them God's word as a beacon in the darkness if they are prepared to listen and see. And in Luke chapter 5, verse 32, Jesus says, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And many do find God when they are in prison. It's a time when they can reflect on what they've done and regret the crimes or sins they have committed. Obviously, not all the prisoners feel like this, but a high proportion of the people that we visit do wish to turn their lives around when they get out, and many turn to God to help. So without going into too much detail, I'd like to tell you about one person who did just that. He comes from a deeply religious family with a brother who was a bishop in America and a sister who was a pastor. He is wheelchair bound and on the wing for vulnerable prisoners. He lost his faith when he was convicted, blaming the victim and drink. And it took him a while to change his point of view, but change it he did. And when he did, he rediscovered his faith. He now holds Bible study classes during association time, helping many of the worst offenders to discover faith and God. As it says in Revelation 7, chapter, verse 10, salvation belongs to our God, and it is possible to see the work of God's salvation in prison. I feel that my small act of compassion can help in this, and it is time well spent. But on this Prisoner Sunday, only one week after Remembrance Sunday, we should also turn our thoughts to those who are unjustly prison, imprisoned. While we remember those sent to concentration camps and gas chambers, we should also remember modern society is not free from injustice. 
we have some innocent people in this country, certainly in the park, who are victims of a miscarriage of justice. It's the best argument I know against the death penalty. But in many countries, people are imprisoned not because they have committed a crime, but for their political beliefs or their sexual orientation or their religious beliefs. In this country, we are shocked and horrified when apparently innocent people suffer imprisonment or even death for exercising the freedom we take for granted, like protesting or going to church. And many are not only imprisoned, but tortured for these activities. And in many countries, sadly, this is normal. This is what they are used to. The organisation Open Doors works with persecuted Christians throughout the world and estimates that in the 50 countries which are the worst places for Christians to live, 2,625 Christians are detained without trial and imprisoned every year. Nearly double that number are executed. This is a horrific number, and that is only 50 countries. There are many more. As there are many of other religious beliefs who are imprisoned and persecuted, not just Christian. So today on Prisoner Sunday, we should spare a thought for all those in prison, not just in this country, but all over the world, where justly or whether justly or unjustly imprisoned, and say a prayer for God's salvation for them all. Amen. And so we come to our questions, something for you to think about. Question one. In what ways does your upbringing make you what you are today? Number two. How do you feel about people in prison? Question three. How do you think you would react if practising your faith meant imprisonment or death? And finally, number four, do you manage to love everyone in the way that Jesus asked? And so let us pray. We thank you, Lord, that in our country we have freedom of worship. We can go to church whenever we want to. We can say your name read the Bible, have a cross in our house without any fear of being persecuted or tortured. And we pray for those people in countries where that is an everyday reality, where their Christian symbols have to be hidden and where they dare not say your name in company. We pray, Lord, that you support them, that you keep them faith, keep them safe, and that you strengthen their faith so that one day they will be with you in paradise. Amen. And we'll say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so we come to our song for this week. And it is, You Are the King of Glory.
Well, goodbye, everybody. Have a good rest of the day and a good rest of the week. And I'll speak to you again soon. Bye.